Hi everybody and welcome back. It's been a while uh, but I'm actually quite excited to uh, share some of our season with you this year. As you know we predominantly publish all of our videos on our Patreon page where we have a support and mentoring group so if you're interested in having a look at more of our content then do pop over and have a look at um, my Patreon page. There's a link below in the description. If you just click on that link and go across, you'll be able to see the content that we have. Something in the order of, well, in excess of 1,200 individual bits of content, videos, podcast, downloads, photographs, that kind of thing. So if you'd like to catch up with what we've been up to, then do take a look at that. What I wanted to share with you today is actually uh, our queen rearing uh, setup that we've got for this coming season and we'll post some more regular videos over the, the coming season. It's been, I, I guess I don't know about the rest of you guys, but it's been a really slow start for us. Uh, it's been bitterly cold, wet and here we are heading towards the end of May and still we have colonies that have struggled to really build up and get going this spring. The good news is we've got a summer of borage pollination to look forward to and I hope to share some of that with you as we go through the summer as well. But specifically today I wanted to show you the queen rearing setup that we've got. We do tend to buy in uh, quite a number of queens from our good friends Luke and Susie, uh, Northumberland, up at Northumberland Honey. If you're interested in getting some queens then they would definitely be worth a look and again I'll pop a link in the description below for you to go and take a look. And I have to say I'm very grateful to Thorn Beehives here in the UK who have um, made some modifications to some of their nukes for us uh, in order to be able to use the John Harding queen rearing method and it's a really interesting setup. Now if you want to take a look at how that setup has gradually come together then again take a look on our Patreon page and you'll be able to see exactly what we've done, how we've made it and put it together and then populated it with, uh, with a couple of nukes. But um, let's go over and have a look because we need to inspect the queen rearing setup prior to actually performing any queen rearing. So we're going to carry out an inspection today and as we go through that inspection I'll talk you through exactly what we've got and why we've got it set up in the way that we have. But let's just have a look at the John Harding queen rearing setup. So here's our setup, quite an interesting uh, combination really. Um, and it's one that's very new to us. We've not used this particular setup before. And uh, uh, it's one that was suggested at a recent bee farmers meeting that I attended. And I just liked the idea of it so much that I thought we'd give it a go. So what you're looking at, um, again, just to thank Thorn Beehives, uh, we've got Langstroth nukes. So there are two nukes at either end which have double boxes. And then we've got a single box, a single nuke in the middle. And you can see that they're connected by around 150 mil of tube, which feeds through into this middle box. Each of these external nukes, the double nukes, are queen right. So we have a queen right colony in this box and we have a queen right colony in this box. Inside the bottom box where it's connected is a small piece of queen excluder on the inside wall of the bottom nuke box on each outside nuke. And these tubes feed through into frames that we've put into the middle. Now you could get away with running just small nukes in the outside box, but what we found is that they've very quickly outgrown those nuke boxes and so we've had to add uh, just recently these two top boxes with foundation. So it could be that we've got um, bees uh, in the top box drawing comb. We haven't yet had a look today. Uh, but we do need to just check to make sure there's no queen cells in them, that they're not trying to swarm, and that this middle box is ready to accept uh, some frames ready to go uh, into our queen rearing system. 
So let's, uh, let's hood up and uh, see how they're doing. So we may as well just work our way across. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all having uh, certainly a better start to the season than we're having. It's been very slow. Uh, but the bees are gradually building up. A lot of our colonies are now kind of into their full size brood box and starting to store uh, nectar and produce a little bit of honey. But we are also looking to expand our colony numbers. We did struggle with some losses over winter, uh, which again I've documented on our Patreon page. Uh, and so we need to actually increase the number of colonies that we've got. And uh, one of the ways that we're doing that is by having a double brood setup, not too dissimilar to this really, only two full-size brood boxes. And those brood boxes will then eventually be split and have a new queen introduced. Hence, we need to produce some queens of our own. So I'm just looking down into this top box and actually, although there are bees in here, uh, they're not doing a great deal with this uh, top box. There's a little bit of comb being drawn, but I'm just going to uh, lift this top box off. Let's just use a hive tool to separate them. And then we can have a look at what's going on in the box below. So five frame nuke boxes. well populated with bees and I'll start at the front and work my way to the back and hopefully you'll see how things are going and this frame uh, looks like they've actually thrown up queen cell at the bottom here so queen cell there. So I need to just check for eggs. So we'll have a look through for eggs. And I'll pop this on the grass, in the grass, just in front of the entrance there. And then have a look through. It's been a while since we've uh, posted any videos on YouTube. As I say, most of our content has been on our Patreon page, so do have a look at that if you're interested in catching up with what we've been up to. Again, we've got some queen cells here. I just had a look in that one and there is an egg in it, so uh, it might be that we need to go through and just remove some queen cells. It's obviously important that we prevent them from swarming because we want to keep as many bees in this uh, particular colony as we possibly can. So we have eggs but also a lot of brood in this particular frame. So we can quite happily knock down any queen cells that we we have. And when we installed this uh, particular nuke I did notice that the queen was very lightly marked. Um, the dot that we had originally placed on her was uh, was quite small, so um, uh, the bees had cleaned off a, a greater part of it as well. So it, it was very much a case of trying to spot that queen that almost didn't have a dot on her thorax. We're also using some of these honey pour plastic frames, which have been quite interesting to use for us as well. Can't actually see the queen on this frame. So I'm going to just work my way through, see if I can find uh, the queen. It's always, you know, it's always handy to be able to spot the queen when you've got queen cells. Um, but knowing that we have eggs allows me to knock down these queen cells now because if 
we happen to not have a queen in here, then I know that they are able to produce uh, another queen cell. So we'll just work our way through and remove, uh, remove these queen cells. What we're trying to do is get the bees in this middle box to produce the queen cells. So I'm going to shake the bees off. And that obviously reveals queen cells that we then cut out. Just put them to one side. You can just make sure that we don't leave anything behind that can be turned into a queen cell and then we lose a swarm from this particular box. Just one at the top here. And you do have to look very closely when you're checking for queen cells. Again, it's a process that you can take your time with. You don't have to rush. And you'd be better off spending a little bit longer actually looking for queen cells uh, than just kind of racing through and, and missing one. Always worth shaking the bees off if you've got uh, a situation where you have queen cells because then it will reveal um, those that are hidden by the bees. So we'll cut these out. Now the reason we're not using this colony for uh, queens, or for queen rearing, is we've got a another colony that was a honey production colony last year that has some, some very calm bees in it. Um, as I say, they were a production colony last year, did really well, really happy with the way that they, um, they performed, and I've selected those as the colony that I want to produce queens from. So we've got plenty of brood here that's about to emerge. And then we can just have a look at these last couple of frames. The bees are not too, too bad in terms of temper. So it's always nice to have bees that are, are fairly calm bees to work with. And uh, doing quite well drawing out this comb. And then we've just got the one frame at the front there on the ground that we will need to check as well. So we've gone through uh, this particular colony. I'll just have a look to see if we've got a queen on this frame. And what I'll do is I'll take this frame out so that I can shake these bees off once I've had a look for the queen. And then we'll remove any queen cells that we find on here. And sometimes the queen really just jumps out at you and other times you could spend all day looking and, and not see her. And I don't see her there, so we'll pop this in and again shake the bees out. Just a very easy shake and that reveals a queen cell here. So we can remove that. And then if we look on the other side, no queen cells there. So we can pop this frame back in. So we just pop the roof back on this colony. So we've been through this colony. It didn't see the queen, uh, but there are eggs in there. And uh, this top box, the top nuke box, is still just foundation. It was only put on a couple of days ago. So hopefully they've not swarmed. Hopefully they'll get into that top box and start drawing that foundation. The next job is to do exactly the same with the colony at the other end of this John Harding queen rearing setup. I'm not going to bore you with that process as well. So I'm going to do that. And then once we've done that one, we'll catch up with you 
in this middle hive. Okay, so we're part way through inspecting this left hand box and I thought I'd just give you a quick look at this particular frame uh, and we're going to move this frame into the middle box and uh, I'll explain my reasons why. You can probably see we've got lots of sealed brood here, so lots of worker brood. There is the occasional drone like this one just about to pop out. Uh, but there's lots of pollen, there's a huge amount of pollen in this frame uh, on both sides. So we've got pollen, uh, there's a little bit of uh, very young larvae and some eggs in here. So we will have to check this frame specifically for queen cells. But there's so much quality pollen here that I really want to put this into this middle box because this is where the queen cells are going to be raised and the bees will need lots and lots of pollen in order to feed um, and, and get that royal jelly into those queen cells. So uh, we need an awful lot uh, of, of pollen and food stores generally for them. So I just need to close this one up. I'll, I'll get this shut up. We found the queen. She's actually in the top box already. So we're going to close this one down and then we'll get this one open and we'll talk through what we're doing with this and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to explain fully how we're going to proceed from that point on to raise our own queens. So without hanging around for too long, let's have a look. So you can see that we've got these tubes coming in from both of these boxes. When we set this up, uh, what we actually um, did was we took uh, frames from each of these nukes, shook the bees off and then put them in here without any bees on them at all. And what has happened is the bees have come through from either side and populated this middle nuke box to look after the young larvae that are in here. So we want to raise queens using the parent colony of our choice. We don't want just random queen cells from any old uh, colony. And actually, just behind me, I don't know if you can see, uh, but we've just recently set this colony up with a queen of our choosing because we want to use her to produce queens. So we're going to take a frame from her to use initially as the Miller method. You might be familiar with the Miller method, but we're going to demonstrate that. It will be over on our Patreon page, so if you're interested, do take a look. But for now, we just need to check this particular box to make sure that we don't have any queen cells. And what we're looking to do is to have a situation where we have uh, lots of nurse bees in this middle box, not lots of drones, there's quite a few drones on this frame, so we maybe swap this out for another frame, uh, the one that we've got down in front of us there. But we have got some queen cells here that we need to um, knock out as well. So we won't have, what we won't have for definite, <laughs> fingers crossed, you know what beekeeping's like, but we sh there shouldn't be any eggs or very young larvae in here because we don't have a queen and we have queen excluders at the ends of these two pipes to prevent the queens from coming through. Now the reason, uh, and we've got some queen cells here, the reason that these bees should produce queen cells is because the pheromone from the queens in the outside boxes is reduced so much by this tube that the bees in this middle box believe that their queen is failing and so produce queens using a supersedure method. But we need to have lots of bees in this middle box. So we're going to remove all of these queen cells that we can see. In fact, we can shake off the bees from the frame and that makes it easier for us to cut out these queen cells and to make sure that we don't actually miss any because again if we miss any of these queen cells 
then we're going to likely as not end up with a swarmed colony and that's not going to be any good to anybody apart from maybe the bees but it certainly won't help us with our with our queen rearing so we'll go through these frames knock down any queen cells that we see no queen cells there there's a rudimentary queen cup at the bottom here rudimentary queen cup is a queen cell that's just been formed that doesn't have an egg or larvae in it it's not actually being used and one of the things that we need to make sure of in this box is that we have plenty of nurse bees so we're constantly replenishing this box with uh, with nurse bees so I think we could probably do with maybe two or three frames of very um, old larvae that's about to emerge we really want those bees to emerge be in this box and assist with the process of developing the queen cells as we go through so I'm going to take that one out as well we have this frame which has got all of our pollen in it so we can pop that one in and I'd really like to put another frame in there so let's have a look to see what we've got in this box here so the queen is in the um, top box and this is another good frame of brood and one of the good things about sealed brood in terms of using it in this situation is that it doesn't need a huge amount of energy to keep warm the brood in those cells does a pretty good job of keeping itself warm anyway so um, we're not going to need a massive number of bees in there so that's our middle box setup we'll have to come back in and knock down uh, some of those um, queen cells that are undoubtedly going to form uh, this frame can come back into the outer box and then we'll pop this frame which actually uh, is really good in terms of uh, egg laying because it's it's almost completely empty there are no no eggs or larvae in it at all so the queen will hopefully get onto that frame and start laying straight into that so we can close this box up uh, we'll probably come back in a couple of days time and start that Miller frame process because I want to have some of these bees emerge I want those queen cells that are going to be formed to be formed so that I can knock those down and then we can introduce our uh, frame from the hive behind me so I just need now to close up these boxes uh, if you've watched any of my videos or many of my videos you'll know that I'm not terribly good with things like woodwork so I'm very grateful to um, Jill and Paul at Thorns here in the UK Thorn Beehives for helping with you know, and I, I appreciate it's just drilling a hole uh, but getting everything made up and set ready they were very very helpful uh, in in assisting me so if you did want to have a a nice setup uh, like this all good to go of course you can make your own but if like me you're not terribly good with woodwork then do give them a, a call have a chat with them and I'm sure that they would be able to uh, make something up for you uh, specific to your needs these are Langstroth nukes uh, we've spent some time considering which hive types we really wanted to use and in the end 
we opted for uh, Langstroth, having used so many different types of, of hive in the past, uh, I really do feel that the Langstroth for me as a beekeeper works uh, superbly well. So there's our colonies all set up, all ready to go. As I say, we'll be back in a couple of days to set up our uh, Miller frame and we'll be producing those videos uh, and posting them to our Patreon page. So do take a look uh, in the description below if you'd like to follow our queen rearing antics over this summer. Uh, and we will post some more videos here as we go through the next few weeks and months into our borage pollination. So look out for more of those videos and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and uh, then you'll be able to catch up with everything that we're, we're up to. And if you have any questions, if you could send them via my website, use my contact page, um, which is norfolk-honey.co.uk. Click on the contact us page and send me the questions or messages via that page because currently I don't really have time to look at all the comments beneath the videos here on YouTube. Um, but yeah, we'll catch up next time. So for now, thanks for watching.